Okay. That's what I'm going to say. Wait, we're doing a video? We are. Why are you whispering? The secrets? Doesn't the mic on? No, that's on. Um, it's not secrets, but we're going to talk about um, the title of this video, which is, Clayton? We don't know. We didn't discuss which, that. Something about 180s. No, which 180s should I build? Ooh, okay. And I see this question come up all the... Ooh, actually, before we even get into the video, the hoopty, the mark. It's coming forward. back. The Mark IV hoopty, we mentioned in the last video, for guys that didn't see that video, our next video, Clayton, it's we're going we're gonna to lick it and stamp it now. Our next video is going to be pulling the engine out of the hoopty. Mm, you with okay. me? I'm with you. I'm with you. So okay. that's my weekend plan. So this video, Start right out, the next video after this one will be about the hoopty. For those that don't know, we have, we don't know if it's really a world record setting, but I don't think many people have made more than 600 wheel horsepower on a completely stock Mark IV 1AT. If you haven't seen the video series, we'll link it above. It's pretty entertaining. It's an absolute piece of junk car that we made really good horsepower in. Check it out if you haven't seen it. So back to the conversation. From the back topic to of 180s, does anybody have specific 180 questions? Whatever it may be. Like specific like to the 180 engine. Yeah. I mean, and again, there's so many of them out there. We only got a small portion. I might not be able to answer the question, but we do our best to answer as many comments and questions we get down below. So if you got a question specific to the 1AT that you're curious about, power, capabilities, whatever, ask below. Okay, back to the point of the video. Which 1AT should I buy? I see it all the time on discussion forums and Facebook groups and stuff like that. Guys looking to build a 1AT and they're wondering which engine they should build. And there are endless, and Clayton, you can add that thing I had showed you the other day mm -hmm. of all the different variations of the 1AT that has existed since probably maybe 96, I think. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's earlier in the a, a, uh, A4s. Maybe. No, I think it was earlier than that. Maybe. Either way, in Europe, they probably got it before us. We in North America only got, I think, a handful of 1AT variants compared to the rest of the world, as you'll see in that list that Clayton mentioned. There are slight differences between some of them. Some of them have larger wrist pins. So this is an AEB piston. It has a 20 millimeter wrist pin. Lots of people will know this stuff, but we're covering it in this video. This is a regular AWP. Uh, 1AT rod and piston with a 19 millimeter wrist pin. So there are some differences between them, but when it comes to building them, you know, yes, a 20 millimeter wrist pin matches most aftermarket rods. However, companies like Integrated Engineering have designed a drop in connecting rod to use a 19 millimeter wrist pin. Both the pistons really are going to take similar power. Uh, the connecting rod, since we were chatting about the connecting rod, here's kind of a difference. Uh, and again, most people would have seen this stuff already, but you can see how rinky dinky these 1AT connecting rods are. They're literally this, like spaghetti. I think it's bent, actually. <laughs> this one? No, I don't think that one's bent. It looks bent. bent. It's just your lens. In comparative, this is just an aftermarket H beam rod. This specific connecting rod, I had made 700 wheel horsepower with this rod okay, check myself. Like, I didn't did run it with these bolts did though. I, I did didn't, I make it? <laughs> I did, but I switched out the bolts to the bigger bolts. Um, but this actual connecting rod, this specific one, was in our dry car engine for a long time uh, until we upgraded. And your, and your rabbit? It was in my rabbit too, yeah. Dave has a rabbit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's lonely. Um, so yeah, the connecting rod, as you can see, substantially beefier when you go to an aftermarket setup. In regards to the pistons, AWP versus, in this case, AEB, there are some slight differences between them, design, a little bit, slight differences aside from the pin itself. But when it comes to the parts, if you're building a 180 engine, 
it really doesn't matter which engine you kind of start with, especially if you're planning on doing a set of connecting rods. Both sets of pistons will handle a good amount of power. And if you're planning on going further, then really a new set of connecting rods and um, pistons are going to take you really far and further than most people are going to do with these things. Really, at that point, it doesn't matter which block you put it in, right? Yeah, so the... Well, this, actually, I'm going to back it up to, for a second. There's a few more things to talk about that, yeah. AEB blocks are definitely different. Yeah, so this would be like an AWP Mark IV, a 180 block. This one is actually out of a Audi TT, I think, 225. Uh, but as you can see, they're very, very similar between the two. Um, the AEB engine is an external water pump block, where these, as you can see here, this one's already on, is an internal water pump block. So there are definitely differences, but if you're starting with an AEB in your car, it's going to be much easier for you to stick with that block because all the accessories and all that are going to be the same. But there are some differences inside the engine. The AEB engines, and people can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just going by the knowledge I've picked up over the years, um, have a cast crank where these AWP engines come with a forge crank. But so, how much difference does that make at power levels that most people are shooting for? 400, in most say, cases, streetcar? Yeah, Clayton's right. In most cases, it's not going to matter. I've never pushed an AEB crank to know how far I can push it. However, I have pushed a... So this engine is basically the same as a Mark IV 2-liter 8-valve block. I have pushed the cast crank in that engine to also 700 wheel horsepower. So all that aside, if you are building a 1AT and you're kind of starting from scratch, don't get wrapped up in exact engine codes. Yeah, I need a 225 with an AB head. And, if yeah. you're doing aftermarket parts, especially rods and pistons, it 99% of the time doesn't matter. Um, the forge crank, as I said, comes in the AWP stuff. And in that list that Clayton probably showed earlier in the video, there are definitely going to be a mismatch of different 180s that come with different parts. So be sure if you're, you know, looking for a forge crank specifically, you pick up an engine, you know, make sure it has that. But again, probably not necessary for most people's builds. The one thing I've learned over my years of doing this People have high hopes and high dreams to make a ton of power in certain things, and they blow a whole bunch of money building something that will never, ever get to the get to Clayton. Come on, the end goal, or the the dream, I guess, right? Yeah, the, the dream, the pipe uh, dream. Yeah, are we back on track? I, th I think so. We have to Clayton and I. We film stuff, and then we redo it like 20 times and then forget where we talked what we talked about and what we left off so with all that aside as i just said in the clip we just watched in regards to crank don't get so uh worked up about what crank is in your engine if you're only planning on making you know three to five hundred horsepower generally speaking most of the cast volkswagen cranks are more than up to the task to handle that power guys chased specific parts in their engine builds um, that a cast crank will take them well beyond what their goals are. So save yourself some headaches, find a good 1AT engine that is in good shape. Or how about this? If you have the one in your car that you know has been well maintained, use that one. Yeah, you don't need to go out and search again for specifically cast cranks I get, or forge cranks I should say. I do understand that if you're building a new setup and you're investing the time and money and stuff into it, but it is a slippery slope when building an engine that everything can just be replaced and, you know, a regular setup to make, you know, three to 500 horsepower ends up costing way more than really it should. And we've proven to make 600 wheel horsepower with a completely stock engine. Now, is that going to be reliable and last long? No, it's not. The rods are going to kick out of that thing at any moment. But 
to build something that is way, way higher or way to build something that's like overkill is just going to hurt the bank account when you could just be oh driving the car and enjoying the three to 500 horsepower that you plan on making. Doesn't it look fancy? Doesn't what? it look fancy? Well, yeah, it does. Just like focus on this for a second. And this one looks brand new. It does look pretty good. Um, turbos. There are definitely a slew of turbos as well for the 180s, KO3s, KO3Ss, KO4s. Between They're all the, junk. In my opinion, yeah. <laughs> on these engines, I never... The, you're only going to make minimal power with them and again we're talking about building engines here so if you're planning on building a 180 you're likely not going to be using stock turbocharger so really do we even need to talk about it clayton no there are slight differences next don't get twisted let's, about it let's worry about something else that makes maybe a little bit more difference which would be an ab head so i don't have a well there's one over there but it's in the box um the ab cylinder head that's this one it has a wider larger port which is what some guys will chase again is it needed for the average three to five hundred horsepower no I don't does think your so. car have a one aeb head it, it does. does yeah um but again the hoopty but did it need it bigger in like no. sometimes it chokes up by the intake anyway there's lots of little things that can make a difference i think with your setup and 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 some of the previous 180s that we've built AEB heads were a lot more prevalent and it was like it only made sense to put them on. Yeah. But now they're getting a little bit harder to find. Um, and again, for the average turbo setup, if you got one, for sure, use it. There's some free power to be had there, yep. but it's not needed. Don't put your build on hold. Wait Don't for put your an AEB head. Right. What else do we want to talk about? Mm, valves, maybe? We talked about the head. Valve train? A little bit? No? Well, um, pause. Clay wants to talk about Valtrain. Springs exhaust valves done. Perfect. Pistons. <laughs> no, we're talking about those. what's needed. What's needed. If you want to rev higher, obviously you want valve springs. The one thing I've said multiple times on this channel when we build 180s, exhaust valves, exhaust valves, exhaust valves. The reason we talk about them is because they're known to be junk and they seem to just leave the chat whenever they want. And whether it's stock built, whatever, if exhaust valve fails, the engine's cooked. So if you're building a 180, it's very wise to invest in some exhaust valves if you plan on making any decent amount of power. Stock bigger, doesn't matter, just get the exhaust valves. Yes, yeah, stronger, stronger, yeah, stronger, stronger. Pistons, stock pistons, we've proven, and many people have proven, not just us, like let's get this clear here. I'm not a 180 guru. Yes, we've had success doing 180 stuff over the years. There's people that, uh, you know, live this stuff much more than I do. However, stock pistons, we've made great power with them. Clayton's car, we did stock pistons, just a set of connecting rods. Uh, we did just over 400 with yours. Ben's car made closer to 500, I think, as a 1AT. Um, on ethanol, I think we made, or no, we did race fuel or something. The blue GLI on the channel, I think that one is stock piston engine, if I remember correctly. Needless to say, if we're making up to around 500 wheel horsepower, Stock 1AT pistons can work for sure. If you're trying to push it or it's going to be heavily tracked or in a heavy well, even car. That being, even that being said, my rabbit. No, in a heavy car. Heavy car that's yeah. what I'm saying. If there's going to be a lot more load on it and tons of boost, stuff like that, then yes, definitely upgrade to forged pistons. But stock AEB, stock, not AEB, stock 1AT pistons can take most people further than they probably ever want to do on a street car. What about those? Those aren't 180. Those aren't 180 cans, but I'm not opening but a new what, box of 180 cans. What about those? There, this is the good thing about the 180 actually, is that there's quite a few aftermarket cams available now. Again, it all comes down to your power goals, what the vehicle is going to be used for, all that stuff. The good thing is the stock cams are good to make decent power. So cams typically will free up horsepower. It's not technically free because you got to buy the cams but 
<laughs> the stock cams can make really good horsepower. So if you're making four or 500 horsepower with stock cams and you do a cam upgrade, you're generally gonna see additional power where that power is and the power band and all that stuff comes down to the cam specifically. But we didn't wanna to forget to mention the cams. Stock 180 cams are good for making good power. David. 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 Um, one other thing we didn't talk about, we talked about stock turbos. I get this question asked more than any other question. Mm. What turbo should I run <laughs> on my 180? And I'm not gonna tell you in this video. Ooh, yeah, that's right. It's gonna be we're gonna do a whole video specifically to sizing turbos for your setup. So what turbo you, should you do for your build? We're gonna have a separate video on it, so look forward to that one. Clayton, the, the most common thing to upgrade in your 180, connecting rods. These things are trash, so. Yeah, noodles. Don't expect them to uh, perform uh, exponentially looking this little tiny. Yeah, speaking of tiny, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that, yeah. but that's what's in the hoopty, which is what we're going to see a video on pretty Coming soon, up. right? Like yes. We mentioned that in the so don't video forget. again. So the idea is hoopty bring in engine out of the vehicle and a little bit of video there. Then live stream roughly a week later. We'll have the timeline and everything, but roughly a week later, live stream about taking the engine apart so we can prove that it has noodle rods and <laughs> pistons and ben all Fells, the stock stuff. probably is what it has. Exactly. Um, For all the naysayers. Clayton's 100% right. You were saying something and I wanted to, you sparked my memory about, um, oh, also in that next video, I've picked up two engines for the hoopty. You picked up more that I'd show it, but you don't want me to show what's going on, but you've shown, you've I picked have up two a lot of engines ideas. that we're going to let you guys decide what we should do. Well, we want maybe not decide a hundred percent because we kind of know what we want to do. <laughs> we want your guys's input. Yeah. So stay tuned in the next video. We got two engines. What's going to go in the hoopty next. That's going to wrap it up for this one. If you guys have any questions or comments, as always, ask them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Clayton, forget anything. We got That's a lot hats. of rambling. We got more hats coming soon. I haven't run out of hats yet, but I just put a huge order in for a whole bunch more. So, yes, support the channel. Support your boys. Buy some merch. See you later. Come on. <laughs> what? We can't see you later. You what never do say I see you later. later. What do I say? See you next time. No, we'll see you in the next video. <laughs>